Summary of Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler, written and narrated by Janky Mind. Introduction The Parable of the Sower narrates the experiences of Lauren Olamina, a young woman residing in a future California marked by dystopia. As her community falls prey to the harsh realities of their surroundings, Lauren embarks on a journey in search of a new life. Throughout her travels, she develops a new set of beliefs and forms connections with a different community. Reading Parable of the Sower inevitably evokes a profound sense of unease due to the striking relevance of Butler's world-building to the current state of the United States. The narrative commences in 2024 within a walled community near Los Angeles, California, where the depicted world is characterized by peril, deprivation, and desperation. Within the community's confines, a small group of neighbors collaborates to survive. Among them is Lauren Olamina, a 15-year-old African-American girl who tirelessly warns others that their haven won't remain secure indefinitely. When the community eventually crumbles, Lauren is compelled to leave her home and join fellow refugees on a journey northward in pursuit of viable employment and freedom from enslavement. The tale encapsulates elements of a coming-of-age narrative, an examination of humanity's essence in times of desperation, and a treatise on the formidable potency of change. Butler underscores the proximity of slavery to contemporary society and underscores that the most marginalized individuals are likely to suffer first when faced with dire circumstances. In this audiobook, we'll provide a concise overview of the major plot developments in this highly acclaimed post-apocalyptic novel. Each section will conclude with a brief analysis of key themes. Let's commence our exploration. Chapter 1, Challenging Times In the year 2024, specifically in July, a significant event occurs within the community. The last wall screen television, a prized possession, finally malfunctions. Lauren Olamina, accompanied by other young members of the town, embarks on a bicycle journey to a nearby church. This expedition is led by Lauren's father, who holds the role of the community's pastor. Although the endeavor is a hardship, the community has collectively pooled their resources to fill the church's baptistry, allowing the newest generation to undergo baptism. Lauren's baptism, however, is not an expression of faith. Instead, it's a gesture of respect toward her father. She has distanced herself from traditional Christian beliefs and other mainstream religions. Lauren is in the process of contemplating a new concept of divinity centered around the idea of change. She is formulating her own philosophical perspectives around this nascent deity, and she might even be laying the groundwork for her own religion. Yet, the specifics of this religion remain elusive. During their journey to the church, the group encounters the dire conditions of those living beyond the protective walls. These individuals are homeless and destitute, many of them being victims of unfortunate circumstances. Among them are women and children, exposed and vulnerable. Lauren herself suffers from an unusual condition called hyperempathy, a result of her mother's drug use during pregnancy. This condition enables Lauren to tangibly experience both the emotional and physical pain of those nearby, humans and animals alike. On a particular outing, Lauren is forced to end the life of a feral dog threatening her group. She feels the dog's agony and its demise, as if she herself is perishing, yet she remains alive. Despite the supportive and safe environment of Lauren's community, challenges persist. The specter of starvation looms ever closer, and occasional raids by marauders breach their defenses, resulting in casualties among those venturing beyond the walls. Lauren possesses a unique insight that eludes others, she comprehends the impermanence of their current existence. While many around her cling to the hope that a new president will restore the past ways, Lauren harbors the conviction that a more dire future awaits. Analysis Upon encountering various members of Lauren's community, a generational divide becomes evident, distinguishing those who remember the world's previous state from those who only know the current reality. 
This disparity evolves as we recognize that Lauren's perspective on the future differs and is perhaps more pragmatic than that of the adults around her. Violence is depicted brutally in the narrative. Outside the protective walls, acts of rape, abuse, and murder are rampant, with no discernible law enforcement or clear condemnation of such behavior. These cruelties are stark reflections of the atrocities humanity inflicts upon itself in the present, painting a grim reality. Lauren frequently discusses the concept of change, often juxtaposing it with the notion of God. She is gradually shaping a guiding philosophy, one centered on the belief that change, with a capital C, is the only true deity. In this belief system, individuals must either embrace change or face destruction. Lauren begins to compose verses that align with this doctrine, eventually acknowledging that she is laying the groundwork for a new religion, which she names Earthseed. The essence of Earthseed centers on the concept that God is synonymous with change, granting humanity the power to shape this divine force. The religion's core tenet asserts that humanity's destiny is intertwined with the stars. Chapter 2, A Wayward Child Lauren faces a predicament. She expressed her worries about the future of her community to a friend, but the friend reacted negatively and reported her. Consequently, her father sat her down for a conversation. As a teenager, she believes she's the lone comprehender of the impending downfall of the community. However, her father reveals his understanding too. He suggests that educating people is more effective than alarming them. Thus, he imparts shooting lessons and instructs individuals to assemble earthquake packs, though the true purpose is more about escape preparation than natural disaster readiness. Through this dialogue, Lauren gains insights into her father's decision-making. She holds him in esteem, yet acknowledges that she'll eventually need to move forward without him. He clings to the optimism of a society she believes is gone for good. Lauren's brother Keith, on the other hand, desires to depart from the community, driven by distinct motives. At 13, he's restless and eager to prove his maturity by venturing beyond the community walls. His initial excursion lasts five days and ends with him returning battered and nearly unclothed. Their father admonishes him and insists on a public apology at church the next day. Keith's actions put the entire town in danger as he pilfered the key to the community gate, which was subsequently stolen. Keith apologizes, but his lesson remains unlearned, and he leaves once again. For several months, Keith lives beyond the walls, periodically visiting his stepmother, Corey, and providing gifts to the siblings he favors. Lauren inquires about his income source, suggesting prostitution or drugs, but he claims to earn money by teaching reading. Later, he confesses to murdering a wealthy man on the road and robbing him. Shortly after, the police inform Lauren's father and stepmother that Keith's body has been found. He had been subjected to prolonged and methodical torture, likely inflicted by drug dealers he had stolen from. Analysis In contrast to her father, Lauren feels no attachment to symbols of hope like insurance or a paid-off house. Her aspirations are directed towards space, particularly countries like Japan that continue to invest in space exploration. She perceives the withdrawal of the U.S. from space travel as a sign that her current location lacks survival prospects. Additionally, we observe the emergence of a prophet in Lauren. She systematically writes her Earthseed verses, which are straightforward and truthful. She believes these verses could serve as the foundation for a philosophy capable of rallying followers and propelling humanity towards space. Keith's story serves as a cautionary example, an answer to the question of whether it's possible to adapt to the present world. The answer, according to Lauren, is negative. Such adaptation necessitates compromising one's values and harming others. Lauren recognizes the need for humanity to evolve, a transformation hindered by clinging to the past. Chapter 3, The Breach 
Lauren finds herself contemplating her limited options, either remain in her deteriorating, enclosed community with her family, or venture north in search of promised opportunities and better living conditions. Her father, who is a college teacher as well, disappears one day, leaving a void in the community. As time passes, the situation worsens without his guidance. Eventually, Lauren's prediction becomes a grim reality, marauders forcefully breach the community gate, unleashing chaos. Criminals, starving individuals, and desperate souls flood in, wreaking havoc. Homes are torched, people are subjected to heinous crimes, and chaos reigns. In a desperate bid for survival, Lauren escapes alongside her stepmother and younger siblings, only to lose sight of them. Armed with a firearm taken from a deceased body, she flees and seeks refuge in a burned-out garage. The following day, Lauren learns of her family's tragic fate and witnesses her community reduced to ruins, pillaged by scavengers. Disheveled and exhausted, she becomes a scavenger herself, salvaging a few belongings and emergency funds. The sight of her deceased friends and neighbors being looted fills her with disgust. The community may have seemed affluent from the outside, but it was far from it. The motivations behind the destructive rampage baffle her. Amidst the chaos, Lauren hears her name being called and encounters two survivors, Harry, a young man, and Zara, another woman from the community. The trio returns to the burnt garage, where they regroup and share information. After resting, they gather their belongings and embark on a journey north, stopping at a secure shopping center for supplies. Analysis While this fictional narrative explores a disturbingly plausible near-future scenario, it also delves into themes of maturation and human evolution. Just as a child must emerge from the shadows of their parents, the story suggests that the human species might need to evolve beyond the confines of its home planet. Lauren's understanding centers on the concept that change is synonymous with God. She refers to planning and foresight as God-shaping, a means of navigating change or attempting to do so. She realizes that resisting change equates to stagnation and demise. Unfortunately, her decision to leave her town is thrust upon her before she can make it herself. The narrative has touched on themes of gender and racial inequality thus far, but as Lauren is forcibly pushed beyond her community's walls, she is compelled to directly confront racial issues. Lauren and Zara are black, while Harry is white. In a bid to minimize potential violence against them, Lauren chooses to present herself as a man during their travels, aiming to avoid scrutiny and prejudice due to their perceived mixed group. Chapter 4, While on the Journey during the night, an unexpected assault takes place under Harry's watch. Suddenly roused, Lauren senses a lifeless body falling onto her, a corpse. As she rises, she witnesses Harry engaged in a losing struggle against an assailant. Acting quickly, Lauren seizes a substantial rock and strikes the attacker forcefully from behind. However, due to her hyper-empathy, she immediately experiences the pain she's inflicted, causing her to faint. Upon regaining consciousness, she finds Harry and Zara expressing concern for her well-being. Realizing she must divulge her condition of hyper-empathy, or sharing as she calls it, she first has to address the unconscious but still breathing man. Upon assessing his injuries, Lauren understands that if left untreated, they could lead to severe suffering or death, impacting her through her empathic connection. Furthermore, his survival might lead to future threats. Grasping the gravity of the situation, Lauren decides she needs to end his life. Harry disagrees and withholds the gun, prompting Lauren to utilize her knife to slit the man's throat. The trio searches the bodies for resources, uncovering money and a few items. Subsequently, Lauren opens up about her condition. Their discussion leads Harry to agree to continue their journey as a group, but he desires insight into Lauren's true self by reading her journal. This leads Lauren to share her Earthseed verses for the first time. In the following days, the group rescues a family in distress, a father, mother, and their infant child from scavengers. 
These newcomers share stories of escaping from oppressive circumstances. The road also introduces them to Bankol, a middle-aged man pushing a cart of supplies, who quickly bonds with Lauren. Additionally, they rescue two young women from earthquake debris and take in a grieving three-year-old child whose mother has been tragically killed. With the group now expanded, they have both additional protection and increased vulnerability due to the presence of young children. Lauren seizes the opportunity to share her Earthseed vision with her new companions, gaining her first followers. Analysis The narrative delves into the question of survival and the lengths one would go to endure, a question answered through Lauren's experiences. Harry represents the inclination to cling to civilization, resisting a descent into primal survival. Conversely, Lauren exemplifies that survival doesn't necessitate relinquishing one's humanity, as demonstrated by their acceptance of the rescued family. The Earthseed philosophy gains further development, with insights into why Lauren personifies God as change with a capital C. This naming is intended to ensure remembrance since ideas are often forgotten. She portrays this god as a neutral entity driven by the nature of change, suggesting that aligning with change is more beneficial than resisting it. Slavery emerges as a central theme, mirrored in the plight of Travis, Natividad, and their baby, mirroring the historic injustices of the 19th century. The narrative prompts reflection on how harsh environments can provoke tribal behavior, leading to hostility and our worst traits surfacing. Chapter 5, Closure and Commencement Continuing their journey northward, Lauren gains deeper insights into the individual she has welcomed into her group and extends her circle further. During a night of caution amidst road violence, a mother and daughter stealthily join their ranks and fall asleep. After deliberation, they decide to include them. Shortly thereafter, a father and daughter also join, revealing themselves as sharers. The process of integration fosters mutual trust among the group members. Lauren shares her religious beliefs and her condition of sharing with Bankol, who reciprocates by disclosing his destination, a 300-acre plot in Northern California owned by his family. He proposes marriage to Lauren, with the condition that she contribute her vision of starting a community on his land. She agrees, binding their futures. Upon reaching Bankol's land, their hopeful aspirations meet grim reality, a scorched patch of earth and the somber remains of Bankol's kin. Undeterred, the united group finds strength in each other, especially as they care for several vulnerable children. Despite their limited resources, they recognize the potential to establish and safeguard a community here. Planting acorns to commemorate their loved ones, they begin constructing shelter and sowing seeds. Analysis Approaching the narrative as a coming-of-age tale, Lauren's evolution into womanhood becomes evident. Her relationship with Bankol, though marked by an age gap, symbolizes a wise and pragmatic choice. Bankol, a kind doctor and landowner, embodies optimism for their shared future. While Lauren's Earthseed ideology is still taking shape, her decision marks the beginning of a resilient community. Lauren's union with Bankol carries intriguing implications. Having sought to distance herself from the past throughout the narrative, she now embraces a partner who represents historical ties. This nuanced decision suggests her realization that even future ventures among the stars remain rooted in earthly realities. By intertwining her revolutionary ideals with terrestrial necessities such as sustenance, shelter, stability, and community, Lauren seeks a harmonious balance. The narrative culminates in an inauguration rather than a conclusion, radiating pragmatic hope. Acknowledging that complete safety is unattainable, the group aspires to thrive in their new environment. This optimistic yet grounded ending encapsulates their collective resolve to endure and prosper. Summary The essence of change, the most potent force on Earth, takes center stage in Lauren's journey towards maturity and her evolving comprehension of this profound concept. 
Initially, her focus is firmly fixed on acquiring survival skills. When circumstances compel her to depart her home prematurely, she embarks on her journey alongside familiar faces. Survival becomes her paramount concern. However, her perception undergoes a transformation as she becomes attuned to the realities of life on the road. Gradually, she discerns the shared humanity that thrives amidst adversity and recognizes the significance of fostering a sense of community. As the expedition progresses northward, Lauren and her companions experience a gradual evolution. They learn to collaborate despite differences and place the welfare of the vulnerable at the forefront. Lauren forms unexpected bonds and finds love and kinship with these previously unfamiliar individuals. These connections are profound, allowing her to sow the seeds of her nascent religion among her newfound community. Although their collective sanctuary remains far from guaranteed, it is a bastion of hope, a place where the potential for growth and transformation takes root. This audiobook summary was brought to you by Janky Mind. We hope you enjoyed it.